Hello, everyone. As a reminder, this session is being recorded. We are about to get started. At this time, everybody is on mute, but there is an option for Q&A at the toolbar. If you click on that, feel free to type in your questions there. We will be uh, disabling the chat option right now, but it will be enabled again during the live ask portion and at the end of the program. We would love for you to share the live Facebook link to any of your social media platforms. Again, that link is facebook.com forward slash CBW Community Health Center forward slash live. At this time, I would like to introduce the CEO of Charles B. Wong Community Health Center. Good evening. Welcome to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation's first ever virtual event. My name is Kaushal Chala. I'm the CEO of the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center. Before we start the show, we have three announcements. First, the organizations being celebrated tonight exist to reduce disparities in healthcare. The path for health centers like ours was paved by the American Civil Rights Movement. And so we are proud to stand firmly against injustice and inequities that still affect black Americans today. As healthcare providers, our primary role is to heal. COVID-19 already disproportionately affects minority communities. Now with the additional pain that our fellow New Yorkers are feeling, we attach extra meaning to our daily work, advancing our mission to reduce inequality. Second, many of you know that Jane Eng, my predecessor, retired earlier this year after a remarkable 40-year career. We look forward to honoring her at the next annual gala, which will be May of 2021. So mark your calendars. It will also be the 50th anniversary gala. What better way to celebrate Jane? Look forward to seeing you there. And finally, this event is not possible without our sponsors. We would like to recognize our first batch of special sponsors who have contributed generously to help us advance our mission. So a very special thank you to our premier sponsors, our, hi our highest level sponsors, Marie and Sha Wai Lam, in memory of Dr. John K.H. Lee and Dr. Jackie Chong, and the Charles B. Wong International Foundation. Special thank you to our diamond sponsors, CP Advanced Imaging, DCH Auto Group, Lithia Motors, Dr. James Chang, in loving memory of Vicki Chang, Henry and Mary Pan, Dr. Raymond Fong, and Miranda Wong Tang. A special thank you to our Jade sponsors, who include Dr. Wilson Ko of Advanced Eye Care, Alexander and Irene Chu, Dr. Pak Chung and the Center for Reproductive Medicine and Infertility, First Republic Bank, Yvonne and Barney Gaw, Victor and Lucy Khan and the Khan Family Charitable Fund, and Savio and Emily Wu. And thank you to our Ruby sponsors, who include Affinity Health Plan, KAIPA, the CAMS KAIPA Community Service Fund, Health First, Ryder Construction, Mary Chan, Peter W. Chen, Genevieve and Fenton Tom. And finally, thank you to our Sapphire sponsors, who include Bioreference Laboratories, Cathay Bank, ESKW Architects, Fidelis Care, Flushing Bank, Ken and Lisa Chin, Sandy Lee Kawano, and Harold Lee and Sons Insurance, Loeb, Block, and Partners, New York Presbyterian Lower Manhattan Hospital, QARI. Gwyn C. and Pao Hua Tuan, in honor of Raymond Fong and Dr. Chun Yip. Bertie Chong, in memory of Dr. Jackie Chong. Chloe, Elise, Jolene, Luca, Estelle, and Dr. Danny Fong. Lloyd Chu and Douglas Mintz. Dr. Benjamin C.H. Peng and Dr. Angela Mei Chan of Peng Urology. Sandra Leung, and Gimbal's Pawn, Ming Nan and Angel Sheng, and friends of Dr. J.P. Chen. Thank you all. 
And now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the host for the evening, the co-chairs for this event. Marie Lam is one of the founders of the Chinatown Health Clinic in 1971, a longtime board member and a role model for Asian American philanthropy. Sandy Lee Kawano was an early nurse volunteer at the health clinic and is now a longtime board member, small business owner, and advocate. And now, to kick off the evening, let's welcome Dr. Raymond Fong, who is the president of the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation. Take it away, Raymond. Thank you, Kwasho, for that warm introduction. Good evening, friends and supporters. We promise you a wonderful, informative, and fun evening. We are so grateful that you are here with us. Tonight, we will hear about how the pandemic has affected our community. We will hear directly from the patients who have been seeking care during this time. We will hear from frontline clinicians at the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center who have been caring for patients every day since this crisis began. We are so proud to showcase, celebrate, and support their efforts. Good evening. This is a critical moment in time as we struggle with the pandemic of COVID-19, as well as the pandemic of social injustice and racism. In this time of tur turmoil and solidarity, we are especially honored to have some terrific friends, supporters, and guests who took the time to join us tonight. It's a bittersweet moment for us because we should be celebrating and honoring Jane Eng, our former CEO who retired after over 40 years at the health center. So we will do that on our 50th anniversary next year in 2021. But tonight we will hear from David Ho, a longtime colleague of our health center who is a renowned HIV researcher. He is now working on a coronavirus vaccine with the generous support um, financially um, from Jack Ma. Please stay tuned to meet our special guests from near and far, from Hollywood to Brooklyn, from Queens to Hong Kong and China, who include Ming-Na Wen, Tai Ma, David Henry Wong, Jeremy Lin, renowned Metropolitan Opera singer, Hao Jen Tian. All these folks have close ties to our New York communities of Chinatown, Brooklyn, and Flushing. At this time, I also want to thank our newest host committee member, casting director John Levy, a longtime college friend of mine, who helped connect our foundation with many of the luminary guests tonight. And we couldn't have made this event possible without the teamwork of our dedicated host committee and staff and it was such a fantastic group to work with. Our mission has always been to provide exemplary and culturally sensitive health care to the underserved Asian American population here in New York City. Never has that mission proved more important than during this crisis of COVID. Throughout the program, you will see on the bottom of the screen ways to support us either through text or with online donations. We thank you all. In 1971, the first Chinatown Health Fair was organized by a group of volunteers to provide health education and screenings to the medically underserved Chinese community in New York City. Today, the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center provides care with more than 250,000 visits each year and wins national awards year after year for their high quality of care. Today, Health Center is what we dreamed of when we founded the free clinic in 1971. I remember right around Chinese New Year, Wuhan locked down and that was you know, huge news um, for not only the world, but for a lot of our patients. The impact for our community really started even uh, before the um, surge that we had in New York City and the U.S. Many of our patients um, and residents in the community have close connections with their families and friends in, in China. 
When the coronavirus hit our city, it was actually very scary. Um, for us as uh, healthcare providers, you know, it was so much that was unknown about the virus. Our community in Chinatown and in Flushing got hit very hard economically. The streets were empty, the businesses were really suffering, and these economic impacts have health effects. We have many patients and their families who uh, are facing unemployment, who have lost their social supports, who have lost access to some of their health care as well. Many of the community work in service industries, home health aides, nail salons, restaurant cooks, servers, um, even the small business owners, of which there are many, they've also been all disrupted. So how can they uh, maintain their livelihood in this kind of environment? Our health center has really risen to the occasion um, to meet the community and serve their needs. We've been open every day to take care of patients. So if someone is ill, we can see them. When many of the practices in our community were closed, we accepted their patients. There were things that needed to be translated, messages that needed to be spread. We actually did all those things to help spread the facts, and not so much the, the myths. In addition, we've adapted to be more safe during this time for our patients. Distancing protocols, wearing masks, giving patients masks, keeping patients in rooms, cleaning the health center extra, we converted almost 90% of our care to virtual channels. Almost overnight, patients could get their care by phone. They could call if they had questions. They could talk to a nurse. The nurse would triage them on the phone. The health center has always been looking to figure out how we can start telehealth. And the COVID pandemic really gave us that push. In a couple of weeks, the whole health center started to do it. The patients really embrace it. They are able to reach their doctors to ask the questions that they need to ask. Patients appreciate the fact that they don't have to put themselves at risk to see the doctor. It is something that we plan to continue. It is definitely going to be a component of the way we provide care, at least for the foreseeable future. And our staff have really come through with flying colors. They are the heart and soul of the health center. They really want to help our patients. So they've pulled together, they've adapted under these difficult circumstances. The guiding principle that we've held throughout this is we want to keep our patients safe, we want to keep our staff safe, we want to be open for our community during this time, and we want to do this in a way where we can rebound quickly and stay open for our community when they need us more than ever. Not only that they have to deal with the anxiety and the uncertainty about um, what's going to happen, there are many staff that also need to juggle childcare, um, taking care of their family. Um, but through it all, I think they're taking it in stride. We have a group of dedicated um, and also, you know, compassion group of uh, employees that are really supporting us throughout this um, pandemic. My husband got COVID and was hospitalized for a couple of weeks. I always felt that I had my team backing me and I, I didn't feel like I was alone. If I needed help, I felt like I could reach out to them and they would provide me the support. It has been difficult. There's been a lot of balance of trying to figure out how to keep our staff safe, how to keep our patients safe, how to continue to provide good medical care to them despite not being able to see them in person, despite not being able to touch them and to examine them. But we've adapted, and, and I think that's what everyone's been doing in this time. It's also helped to bond everyone together um, because you know, we're going through this very you know, difficult time together, but we're all working together and getting through it. And I think it speaks true to the leadership of this organization. We quickly pulled together a team to address many of the um, issues and also coordinate the efforts among all the sites. It was just a collective effort of everyone to try to make this um, organization continue to function and be available to our communities. I'm very proud of our staff of being able to join together, be willing to change because change is really hard, especially in times when there's a lot of confusion and fear and 
uncertainty, how staff have embraced it. I started in late February, and within two weeks, things really started to get pretty serious for COVID-19. I feel very blessed to have started when I did, um, because when our organization is in a adversity, I get to see us at our best, and I got to see our staff uh, really step up in, in, in amazing ways. They all have great hearts. They really care about our, our patients, uh, the community. They are part of the community. They are the community. So it's like taking care of themselves, their mothers, their aunties, grandmothers. So I want to keep them together. I want to keep our staff together, keep them, keep them whole, keep our health center going, you know, alive and thriving for the community, you know, for the next 50 years. Thank you, healthcare providers, for your dedication. Tonight, it is my honor to introduce Dr. David Ho. Thanks to his pioneering discoveries on HIV AIDS, he has made what was once a mandatory death sentence into a much more manageable disease. For this, he was honored in 1996 as Time Man of the Year, the first medical person to be so honored since the inception of Time Magazine. Good evening, and thank you, Raymond, for the kind introduction, and thank you to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation for years of leadership in New York City's Asian American community. I have dedicated my career to fighting HIV AIDS, and we have made huge strides in developing better treatments that have transformed a death sentence into a manageable condition. As I speak to you today, we are once again confronted with another viral pandemic. The scientific community has massively mobilized and a solution will be delivered in due course. In the meantime, we have to take our precautions to reduce the transmission of the virus, as well as to rely on world-class primary care and health education for our underserved communities. I'm here to voice my support for the efforts of the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation and for the frontline healthcare workers at the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center. Their invaluable work saves lives and reduces human suffering in our community. Please consider supporting them today in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you. My name is Philip Chong Jr. I'm a real estate developer based out of New York City, and I've been a patient at the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center for four years. With the onset of COVID-19, it was the first time that I was without work for a long time. It was also the first time that I was at home for an extended period of time. And it was really the first time where I questioned whether or not I'd be able to access quality health care. I had actually run out of a, a medication that I, I take on a daily basis. So I was incredibly happy and, and at ease to know that telehealth was an option. I remember first speaking to one of the administrators, having her walk me through the process and setting me up, waiting in the virtual waiting room for a few minutes, and then eventually seeing my doctor. Even as a millennial, I'm a little bit skeptical about technology and technology applied to a lot of different practices and industries. But as soon as I, I logged on and really got into a conversation with my doctor, um, it, it all just felt extremely natural. Um, and without having you know, to go out, to go to the facility, to have to wait in line, to sign in, um, it, it was really a truly a, a peek into the future and in a, in a future that I'd certainly invest in. As a board member of the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center, and more importantly as a patient, I wanted to offer my sincerest thank you to the health center for bringing telehealth in a time of need for all their patients, but more importantly, keeping the health center open uh, during COVID-19. And with that, I'd like to introduce our next guest. CBA player for the Beijing Ducks, first Asian American to win an NBA championship title and SB award winner, Jeremy Lin. What's up everyone, I'm Jeremy Lin. Uh, first off, I'm so happy to join you guys in supporting the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation mission to provide healthcare 
uh, at a, an extremely, extremely important time for a lot of Asian American uh, immigrants and a lot of just underserved people in New York City. And so what you guys are doing right now, the way that you guys have stepped up is really, really amazing. And so I just really wanna say thank you and shout out to the Charles B. Wang Community Health Center. I really, really hope that during this time, uh, we can all uh, be a part of change. And, and so for me, you know, not being able to be on the front line and not having the expertise, uh, one way I can help is to support organizations and people that are actually doing this work. And so you guys are doing that. And so uh, I hope that everyone, uh, you know, chips in and helps to support you guys. Thank you so much. Keep doing great work. Thank you, Philip, for Jeremy's wonderful remarks. That's terrific. All the way from China, Jeremy could join us tonight. It is now my honor to introduce one of the guests who really stepped up first and so enthusiastically wanted to salute our healthcare workers in New York City. And that is Ming-Na Wen. Ming-Na is a wonderful actor. She's got ties to New York City and lived in Queens as a young child. She now resides in Los Angeles and has been in many, many roles on television and in film. She's best known for her roles in Mulan, The Joy Luck Club, ER, and now many seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We are delighted to hear her message tonight. Here's Ming-Na Wen. Hi everyone, I'm Ming-Na Wen, and I'm here to give a big shout out to the first responders of the Charles B. Wan Community Health Center. I've been hearing that you guys are doing amazing work. Thank you so much for all your bravery, your hard work. It is definitely being noticed and we are so appreciative. Thank you so much for all your help with the Asian American communities in New York City during this pandemic and for helping anyone who needs it at this time. So please stay safe. Please, um, my heart is with you all. I remember when I was a little girl, I would uh, go to Chinatown with my mom and my brother and we would have the best meals and, and bring home the cutest little trinkets. So I have very fond memories of New York City and of Chinatown. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation for funding such an important center. Um, please, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you guys are doing. You are remarkable. Um, so sending my love, please stay safe. Love you all. Every year, the foundation provides opportunities to our staff, as well as to talented high school students to pursue their health careers. It is my honor to present some of the awardees for this year. The Dixon He Scholarship was dedicated to providing support to one of our staff members. This year, the Awardee is Bixia Chen. She is using her scholarship to further her career in getting a master's of social work. Congratulations, Bixia. Thank you, Raymond. Our next awardees are for the Tom Dr. Thomas Tam scholarships and was, were chosen based on their demonstrated commitment to community service or their potential to serve as community health leaders. The four awardees are Victoria Jong, going to Carnegie Mellon University, Sophia Chalk, Swarthmore College, Ganga DePaul, Cornell University, and Runlin Jiang, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Again, congratulations to all the scholarship recipients. Please take a moment to donate now to support the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation's scholarships and other community-based programs. Thank you, Marie and Raymond. And we wanna congratulate the scholarship recipients and wish them well in their future endeavors. Our next guest who's joined us in the room tonight is David Henry Wong, known to many as a playwright, screenwriter, and Tony Award winner for M. Butterfly. David Henry Wong is also an activist and theater professor at Columbia University. He and I have worked on many political campaigns together and also advocated for Asian American issues, including healthcare. Leaving LA and Manhattan for Brooklyn, David now continues to work with our community on fighting social injustice. 
He is known for his scores of work, many, many plays, um, such as Yellowface, Chinglish, and Soft Power. So here tonight are some words of wisdom from David Henry Wong. Hi, I'm David Henry Wong, and I'm a playwright. I was yelled at by another patient at a routine doctor's appointment. Have you been to China in the last 14 days? One actor with whom I've worked closely was called a Chinese virus. Another was assaulted with the words, you should be in quarantine. We've all heard these stories and worse, experienced them and feel the fear, not only of COVID-19, but of the hatred and scapegoating which has exploded against Asian Pacific Americans from the highest levels of our government to our own neighborhoods and communities. Some patients are refusing treatment from Asian American healthcare professionals, even though the majority happen to be Asian in many hospitals and cities. The CB Wang Community Health Clinic is fighting the full battle in this critical time against the virus itself and also against the terrible racism, stereotyping us as perpetual foreigners and tying us to the disease which existed long before this particular health crisis. They fight on the front lines to treat, save lives, educate, and battle the virus of anti-Asian hate. If you can, please donate to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation to ensure quality, culturally sensitive care for members of our community and advance a more humane future for us all. I'd now like to introduce Richard Stein. When we were planning this event, we immediately thought to draft our dear friend and supporter, Richard Stein, who has conducted our live auctions and has been our spokesperson for fundraising drives over the last 10 years or so. He's always made our dinners at Jing Feng very lively and helped us raise a lot of money. We are fortunate that Richard came all the way from Philadelphia to continue that tradition today. He's got a big voice, but a bigger heart. So here's a few words from Rich. Can you hear me, folks? Um, listen, I am so thrilled and so happy and so honored that you have asked me to be part of this event tonight. Uh, sorry, I can't come there and personally squeeze money out of each and every one of you. Uh, I know that if you have stayed through the program this long, you are a loyal supporter of the Charles B. Wong Chinatown Community Health Center. And I'm just gonna give a quick shout out once again to some of our, uh, our, our big sponsors, uh, our premier sponsors, Charles B. Wong International Foundation, Marie and Xiao Wai Lam, uh, Dr. Raymond Fong, Henry and Mary Pan, Dr. James Chang uh, of CP Advanced Imaging, Miranda Wong Tang, and DCH Auto Group, and of course, Lithia Motors Incorporated. Okay, this is the audience participation part of our show. So, this is the chance that you get to be part of this telephone and to uh, start to send in your contributions. Uh, we've got some suggested amounts for you. For instance, uh, you could donate $1,971 to commemorate the year 1971 that the volunteer-run clinic was founded. Uh, even better, you can donate $2,971 to celebrate the upcoming millennium of the Charles B. Wong Chinatown Health Center. Of course, things will be a little bit different with healthcare then. Um, so let me tell you, first of all, how you can do this. Get out your cell phone, and uh, you are going to text. Uh, I'm going to go to te texting right now, and you're going to text 44321. And when you do that, then you're going to type in health 2020. That will take you immediately to a place where you can donate securely. And all you have to do is find the amount you want to donate, press the button for that amount, and donate with Apple Pay in my case. 
And here it goes. And it's processing. And my donation is going to come through very quickly. I hope yours will be too. Uh, there it is. It's done. And we've, I already see numbers coming up here. We've got 700 of our $25,000 already donated. One from me, one from Shailene Rao, one from Kenneth Chin. Thank you so much to you. Uh, folks, if you donate $5,000, I will come to your home and I will duplicate the dinner that is uh, usually offered by Jin Fong. If you donate $10,000, I won't come to your home. Philip Chong, thank you for $1,000. Thank you so much. Uh, we also have a, a donation from IVC, a $200 donation from IVC, one of our health center staff members. Um, we have a donation from Kitty Chen for $500, uh, one of our health center finance committee members. We, we're, by the way, we're, as you can see, we're aiming for $25,000 tonight. Uh, not as much as we usually get from our auction, but uh, there's a lot of costs that we don't have. So, but this is really, really important. This is your chance to make a difference for the Chinatown Health Clinic. If you donate $640, you'll be commemorating the enormous impact of Project Ahead. Hey, Janet Salazar, thank you, $50. Elaine Sheng, thank you, $300. Anyway, getting back to Project Ahead, the Health Center runs one of the longest continuing health careers training programs in this country. It focuses on Asian American community health. And since 1975, 640 college students have participated in this project. Thank you, Timofey Gerasimov, $300, donated just a few moments ago. Anyway, these Project Ahead alumni have become leaders in healthcare, both in New York and across the country. So your donation of $640 will honor them. Um, whoop, I'm seeing a whole bunch of stuff going on here. $1,000 by Philip Chong. Oh, they want me to tell you again that you can donate not only by texting, but if you'd like, you can donate um, online as well. Go to bit.ly slash chcf gala 2020, and you can donate online. or send a check to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation at 268 Canal Street, 6th floor, New York, New York, 10013. That's Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation, 268 Canal Street, 6th floor, New York, New York, 10013. Um, if you would like to uh, make a pledge and have us call you to discuss it with you, just um, hit the chat button and, um, and uh, or the Q and A button, and we'll we'll uh, take that pledge. Stephen Chan, Ethel Lee, Joanna Lee, Lisa Lamb, Sean Sean Stokes. Thank you all so much. The numbers are climbing right now. Uh, here's a, a a wonderful additional bonus. This just in: if you donate three hundred dollars or more, you will receive a limited edition CJW branded cloth mask. This is a limited edition mask, first come, first serve. Thanks, Melissa Ocampo. Um, let me tell you more about this mask. It's unisex, one size fits most adults. It's machine washable and dryable. And let me tell you a little bit about the company that makes these masks. It is a small business and run by an Asian woman. Uh, and it's a wonderful company, a wonderful fashion company. And they have uh, been making these masks in throughout the pandemic uh, to, to do that vital work. Um, and did you know that the coronavirus relief bill gives you an extra $300 tax break for charitable donations in 2020? So any donation of $300, um, Uncle Sam will give the money right back to you at tax time. So please keep those donations coming in right now. Um, I see Perry Pong, $100. Stephanie Cheng, $300. Uh, we're already up to over, it's, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing, up to $4,800. So let's add Dr. Leslie M. Schwang for $300. Lauren He for $51. Uh, Nicholas Ashback, $100. Those will all start uh, adding on here any moment. 
Meredith Pong, $51. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, let me give you another milestone. How about donating $200 to cover the approximate cost of delivering a high quality patient visit? Zhao Long donated $21. Amy Lee, $100. Mark Fishman, $640. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, let's get back to those $200 donations. Let me tell you what they offer. This means that doctors, nurses, medical assistants, and scheduling staff um, will be paid for. Xavier Wong, $100. Wayne Ho, $100. Thank you so much. Uh, remember, you didn't have to pay to come to the dinner. You didn't have to sit through the dinner. You don't have to pay for parking. Bob Scaliter, $150. Wasn't it worth, uh, worth it for you not to spend the time waiting at that darn parking garage uh, behind Jin Fong. That alone is probably worth $100 right there. Um, being able to watch this entire wonderful program in your pajamas, that's worth another $100. Stuart Kwok, $307, thank you so much. Sandra Leung, $500. Ming Lee, $50. We're already over $7,000. Betty Cheng, $307. Thank you so much. And let me also, uh, at this moment, while you're uh, giving, take a moment to thank some of our other sponsors, our diamond sponsors, Dr. Raymond Fong, Henry and Mary Pan, Dr. James Chang of CP Advanced Imaging, Miranda Wong Tang, DCH Auto Group, and Lithia Motors. Also our Jade sponsors, Alexandra and Irene Chu, Dr. Pa Pak H. Chung from the Center for Reproductive Medicine and Infertility. First Republic Bank, Yvonne and Barney Gaw, Victor and Lucy Can, Can Family Charity Fund, Dr. Wilson Co. for Advanced Eye Care, and Savio and Emily Wu. Thank you all so much for that. And let's get back to looking at uh, how our, that's, oh, we're up over $8,300. Derek Ho, $300. Oh Kian Ong, $512. Christina Wang, $300. Thank you, thank you. Encourage the other people at your table to text as well. Um, we accept donations from every family member. It's, it, you know, teach your children to donate. Your two-year-old, your three-year-old, your four-year-old, they can donate too. Sophia Tsao, $311. Um, and um, Anonymous, $103. Thank you so much, Anonymous. We know where you live. Thank you. Pat Wang, $300. We're up over 9,000. I'm having trouble pronouncing this one. Yaiji Zhu. $100, I hope I got that right. Uh, we're getting close, folks. We only have a few minutes left. So keep those dollars coming in. I'm gonna now thank our Ruby sponsors. Here they are, Affinity Health Plan, CAMS Kaipa Community Service Fund, Kaipa, that's the Coalition of Asian American IPA, Genevieve and Fenton, Fenton Tom, Health First, Mary Chan, Peter W. Chen, and Ryder Construction. Thank you to them. Let's go back to our thermometer. We're over 10, close to $10,000. Esther Silver, $100. Shirley Moy, $300. Arnold Kawano, $300. Thank you, thank you. Um, now, if you donate $100, you will be celebrating over 100 scholarships. Laura Halpern, $37, thank you, that have been awarded by the foundation. The scholarships provide support for professional development opportunities for healthcare workers and support staff who provide critical care and services at the front lines of the health center and provide support for the eligible high school students who demonstrate that they are committed to promoting healthy choices and fulfilling the needs of their community. Errol Pierre, $300, thank you so much. Janice Wan, $100, thank you. And we're up over 10,000. Karen Liu, $512, thank you. Loretta Al. $311, thank you. Evelyn Chen, $100, thank you. Irene Chu, $300, thank you. Um, Dr. Richard Chan, $300. Uh, for Friends of CAMS, the Chinese American Medical Society. Uh, Lauren He, $50. From, uh, she's a Project Ahead alum, giving back after having gotten. Dr. Stephen Pond, $300, another Project Ahead alum. And Bill, I see you sitting at your table there. You're fumbling with your, with your credit card. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is text 44321. And when you get to that number, text HEALTH2020. It'll take you right to our giving page. You can also visit bit.ly 
slash chcfgala2020 and make your donation directly online or send a check to the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation at 268 Canal Street, 6th floor, New York, New York, 10013. How are we doing on our, uh, on our thermometer there? Over almost 12,000. Willie Wong, $100, thank you. Jiming Liang, $300, thank you. Irene Chu, $300, thank you so much. Elaine Hung, $25, thank you. Uh, it's so gratifying to see the range of, of gifts that people are giving. Kenneth Shea, $100, thank you so much. Keep those donations coming. Uh, see if I can keep on talking without running out of breath. I'm telling you, this is one of the most weird things I've ever done. It's very different from doing the auction, I can tell you that. Ji Hook Ju, $205, thank you so much. Um, how about, um, let me tell you a little bit more about our sponsors. Our last group of sponsors are our Sapphire sponsors. Uh, Dr. Benjamin H. C. Peng, doc, uh, Dr. Angela May Chen, Bertie Chuang, Bioreference Laboratories, Cathay Bank, Edelman Sultan Knox Wood Architects, Fidelis Care, Flushing Bank, Dr. Danny Hong, Gwyn C. and Pao, Huan, Pao Hua Tuan, Hen Chin and Lisa Lim, Lee Block and Partners, Lloyd Chu and Douglas Mintz, Ming Nan and Angel Sheng. New York Presbyterian Lower Manhattan Hospital, Sandra Leung and Gimbel's Pond, Lee Insurance, Harold L. Lee and Sons Incorporated Insurance Services, QARI, and the friends of J.P. Chen. Thank you to all of you. Let's go back and see how we're doing. All right, we're well over $12,000 now, and thank you to Naomi, to Naomi Feldman for 100. Thanks to Les Schwang for 300. Uh, thanks to Jie Huey Zhu for 205. Thank you to uh, Lauren He for $50. Oh, I think I mentioned her already. Thanks to Francis Lee for $100 from uh, another Project Ahead alum. And thank you to Jennifer Fung for $100 uh, for Project Ahead alum and, and, and Health Center Medical and Dental Advisory Committee member. And uh, I just want to say a, a little shout out to my wife, Hillary. Hillary, if you're watching, make a donation now. We need to keep this thing moving. Susan Cole, if you're there, Make a donation now. Let's keep this thing moving. Wow, it's up over $14,000. And um, how about uh, Johnny Levy? I know you did so much uh, to help us out with the celebrities, but we need your cash too, Johnny. Uh, text 44321. Text HEALTH2020 to 44321 and make your donation now. Um, thanks to Melinda Shala for $103. Thanks to Naomi Feldman for $100. Uh, let's keep it moving. We got to keep going now, folks. We haven't reached the $25,000 number yet. Oh, now it's moving up again. Thank you to Hannah Ho for $51. And um, uh, what else can I offer you now? Uh, I've already offered the dinner. Oh, I know what I can offer you. I'll tell you what. Make a donation of over $5,000, and you can take a trip to anywhere in the world, all expenses paid by you. But you'll also have the fun of having given $5,000 to the Charles B. Wong Chinatown Health Clinic. Sang Khan, $500, thank you so much. David He, $50, thank you so much. We're almost up to 15,000. How about another one right now that'll get us over 15,000? We don't have too much time left. There we go, Angela Chan, $300. That brings us over 15,000, just another 10,000 to go. How about one donation of $10,000 so you can shut me up? Or two donations of 5,000? Um, I can't see myself, I hope I don't look too weird to you right now, but Jan Janice Chu, $100, thank you, Janice. Susan Cole, $307. Thank you so much, Susan. I guess you were listening. Mac Cole Edelsack, are you there? If you are, open up your to telephone and text 44321 and then text HEALTH2020 uh, to make a donation uh, to the Charles B. Wong Chinatown Health Clinic. Miguel Centeno, $307. Thank you so much. And uh, every one of you who, who gives over $300 will get one of those wonderful custom special 
um, edition Chinatown Health Clinic masks. They go with every decor. They go with every outfit. Victor Lee, $307. Thank you. Clayton Young, $154. Thank you. Praveen Mehta Balmi, $100. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, anybody else that I know, if you know me, text 44321, text HEALTH2020 to 44321 and make your donation now or go right to the internet and uh, text uh, bit.ly. Show me again on the screen there, please, what the, what the number is for them to text. Okay, bit.ly slash CHCF Gala 2020. And you can make your donation directly on the internet. Or if you still like snail mail, you want to support your local post, post person, I understand. Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation, 268 Canal Street, New York, New York, 10013. We do accept checks. There's a Chase Bank in the neighborhood. There's a bunch of other banks. We can deposit the checks and use them for the good works. Let's take a look and see how far we've gotten. We're up to 16,568. Gerald Lee, $100. Thank you so much. Um, here it goes again. We're up, okay. Sherry Huang, 207. Thank you so much, Sherry. Stephen Ortiz, $100. Thank you, Stephen. I wish I could see you at the tables around Jin Fong but I hope you're in a wonderful place and I hope you're enjoying this evening and I hope you're enjoying participating and helping us out to reach our goal. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to just keep talking all night. If you wanna stop me from talking all night, you'd better start donating now. Don't forget, dial 44321 on your cell phone, text in health 2020, just like Andrea Lynn did, for $103, thank you, Andrea, and you can shut me up. We have 76 people have already donated. Thank you, I know there's more of you watching, so please give something, anything, whatever you can. Uh, we truly appreciate small donations, large donations. Um, uh, we do only accept money at the, currently, but I'm sure that if you wanted to text that you wanted to uh, give us uh, valuable midtown real estate or, uh, a, or that empty lot in Flushing that you don't know what to do with, we'd be happy to accept that as well. Sandra Yu, $103, thank you so much. Uh, Audrey Chang, $100, thank you so much. Uh, if you've got some stocks or bonds lying around that you would like to share, if you'd like to mention us in your will, if you're not sure how much you want to give and you just want to make a pledge, uh, go ahead and chat to make that pledge. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want to be recognized, text 44321, text HEALTH2020 to that number, and you'll be able to pledge directly. Thanks to Kathleen W. Lee for $51. Um, we're up to $17,233. Uh, we're, we're getting there, folks. Sarah Tembekjian, $103. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'll be more than happy, by the way, to, uh, uh, if, if you give over $300, Muchuan T. Chen, $200. I'll be happy to record your answering machine message, if you like, on your home phone. Um, text to 44321. Text HEALTH2020 and Follow the instructions and you'll be able to donate immediately. We're getting really close, folks. So um, how about a few more of you is all we need to get right up there to set $25,000. Um, and uh, I'm running out of things to say. So if you don't want me to sing, you'd better uh, get a, at least another $1,000 in here in the next couple of minutes or you're going to have to hear me sing I don't know what but I'll do something to keep this thing going, um, unless they stop me, of course, which would be uh, perhaps uh, uh, very uh, kind to you folks. But I'm not gonna stop because I know what we need. Austin Cheng, $1,005. Thank you so much, Austin. Uh, you're entitled to a moment of silence for that.
But while I'm being silent, don't forget to, to, to dial 44321 and text HEALTH2020. And again, let me remind you of what the milestones might be. You can give a $1,971 contribution to celebrate uh, the, uh, uh, the founding of the, of the health center. You can give a $640 donation. Yan Kling Wu, $172, thank you so much. Give a $640 do donation to commemorate the impact of Project Ahead. Heidi Chen, $100, thank you. Sun Li, $100, thank you so much. You can give $300, get that wonderful face mask um, that's uh, double layered and, and, and incredibly comfortable and really fashionable, um, made by the CJW company. You can donate $200 to cover the approximate cost of delivering a high quality patient visit doctors, nurses, medical assistants, and scheduling staff, or $100 to celebrate over 100 scholarships that have been awarded by the foundation. Catherine Lee, $311, thank you so much. Wow, we're getting close to $20,000, folks. Let's push it over 20,000 in the next half minute. Deborah Chan, $100, thank you, Deborah. Benjamin Holloway, $307. Thank you, Benjamin. I also want to thank all of the celebrities who appeared in the videos tonight and took time out from their schedules to help us with, with this program. A huge fan of all of them. Um, and I'd love to see Jeremy Lin come back and, and, and help the Knicks win a championship one of these days. Annette C. Wong, $51. Thank you so much. Um, also like to thank the entire staff of, uh, th that, that put this whole night together. They worked so hard. Nuna Kim, $100. Thank you, Nuna. Arthur Sung, $200. Donated just a few seconds ago, it says here on my screen, probably on your screen too. Uh, we're up over 20,000. Kwan Hing Lee, $100. How about... Five people donate $1,000 and you can shut me up. Just $1,000 from five of you. You know who you are, I see you out there. You know, I have a two-way screen. That's incredible, the technology that they give me here. So, uh, so that's it, pick up your phone, 44321. That's it, Health 2020. Now choose your contribution, pop it in there. And let's see what comes out on the other end. Anybody since Quan Hing Lee? Of course, anybody who's made a contribution, you're more than welcome to make an additional contribution too. You're probably wishing this whole thing would be done real quickly. And you can do that by just doubling your contribution now. And don't forget, up to $300 is a fully deductible above and beyond uh, any of your other deductible contributions this year. So don't worry about making this contribution in addition to any of the other wonderful charities that you support. Um, just a few minutes to go, and we're up to $20,000 already. Uh, I mentioned, of course, that if you donate $100, that celebrates over 100 scholarships that have been awarded by the foundation. And these scholarships provide support for professional development opportunities for healthcare workers and support staff who provide critical care and services at the front lines of the health center and provide support for eligible high school students who demonstrate they're committed to promoting healthy choices and to fulfilling the needs of their community. Hi, Richard. Oh, can you hear yeah. me? This is Rochelle. I hear you. Hi, Rochelle. Hey. Uh, I think we are almost up to our goal, but I'm pretty sure we're going to reach our, our um, time here. For okay. So Folks, just because I'm shutting up and passing the uh, torch to the next speaker yes. does not mean that you cannot text uh, and continue texting throughout the program. So thank you so much for getting us so close to the goal at this moment. And thank you for continuing to text so that we do reach our goal. Um, and wow, wow. I just received a message from the development team 
that we have raised with, with all of your contributions, not just the texted contributions, getting close to $25,000, but all of your contributions have given us over $500,000 for the night, more than half million dollars in donations, donations and pledges for this virtual fundraiser. Wow, thank you so much. What a success. I'm so happy to have had a chance to help reach that mark. Please feel free to continue sending your text to donate. One last time, 44321. When you type that in, type in health 2020 and continue to make those donations. We're up over $21,000 now. Thanks to Shirley Moy. Thanks to Kayan Wong. Thanks to Mei Young. Thanks to Olivia Gaw. Thank you to everybody who has made this evening such a success. Thank you, thank you. And I'm passing it on to the next person now. And uh, goodbye. Thank you, Richard, for leading our live ask and encouraging donors to give. Every donation counts, and so many thanks. It is my honor to introduce our special guest performer and good friend, Martha Liao and Tian Hao Jiang. Mr. Tian is an internationally known opera singer who has sung for 20 years with the New York Metropolitan Opera. His wife, Martha Liao, is the president of the famous I Sing International Young Artists Festival. Hello, everyone. This is Martha. Hi, this is Tian. We are very honored to be invited by the Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation for us to participate in this 2020 Chinatown Health Clinic Foundation Virtual Gala for fundraising. We are in Hong Kong now, and we really miss New York and all our friends. We wish all the best to you, to your family, and I hope you are all safe. We will do a song. Um, and it will be dedicated to all the doctors, nurses, and all medical staff that you have been all working so very hard, so bravely to help save lives during this pandemic. Martha and I, we, this is our great pleasure to sing this song for you. I think many of you know this song. The song is called Danny Boy. And also, of course, this song is in memory of all those who died. The pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you, must go and I must buy. But call me back when summer's in the meadow Oh, when the land is hushed and white with snow It's hard in sunshine or in shadow Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so. But when you come, and all the flowers are dying, 
Our next guest, who has joined us from Los Angeles, but grew up on Staten Island, New York, I want to introduce Ty Ma, the actor. He was a local hero from Staten Island and was often seen around Chinatown before heading to LA to follow his dream of acting. He was honored by the Museum of Chinese and Americas in 2019 and has acted in dozens of TV shows and films. You've seen him in Rush Hour, and most recently, he played the father of Aquafina's character in the movie, The Farewell. This year, in 2020, look out for Tai Ma in Mulan. I thank my cousin, Karen Huey, for putting us in touch with Tai to join our tribute tonight. So here are a few words from Tai Ma. Hi, this is Tai Ma. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all the healthcare professionals, mental health professionals, all the support staff at the Charles B. Huang Community Health Center, all your hard work, sacrifice, and dedication is greatly appreciated. In these unprecedented times, i also like to extend a hearty thank you to your families for sharing you with us. Thank you very much. We are coming to the close of our program. This hour has gone by quickly. It's still not too late to contribute to our mission, so check out the information at the bottom of your screen. If you have trouble navigating or donating, please email us or just call the health center. We thank you all for coming, taking the time out of your busy schedule and lives and for your generous donations so far. To conclude this evening, I'd like to introduce one of our founders that you've been hearing from all night, Marie Lam, to offer our final words of thanks. Our goal in 1971, when we launched the free clinic, was to serve our community with culturally sensitive care and help them to access the healthcare system. After 49 years, we are still doing that. It is important for us to be there for our community during this crisis. Many healthcare providers have closed their doors during this crisis and we continue to be there for our community but our finances have been hit hard 
since mid-March. We need your help to continue providing care through the rest of this pandemic. Your contributions will support patients' care during this pandemic and during the road to recovery. We invite you one last time to please help us help our community. There are many thank yous in order. Thank you to the staff of the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center who have been working hard throughout this crisis to serve our community, even as they face the same anxieties at home. Thank you to all of our guest speakers for supporting our work. And most of all, thank you to all of our attendees, sponsors, and donors for joining us tonight in support of our community and for helping us to help the community. Thank you and may you all have a healthy and blessed evening.